So this leads me to, you know, under what conditions should you stop following or delay your dreams, right? I, I, I fear that the answer to this question is, at least superficially, the same answer I gave you in the previous question. It is a simple matter of risk and consequences. Since many of the consequences of following your dreams lie in the future, such as ending up broke after reaching old age, postponing the other aspects of your life in order to work solely uh, only on the aspects that have to do with your dream, and you have to ask yourself, how likely is it that the consequences you fear will become a reality? The more you think these negative consequences are to the more likely you think these negative consequences are to occur the more likely you are to abandon your dream but there is a difference between the actual risk of your dream failing and your perception of how likely the dream is to fail right so so for an for an analysis like this oftentimes there are too many variables to take into consideration before we can ever reach a sensible conclusion Therefore, we have to abandon the process of overanalyzing our current situation by using subjective wit and work with the little information that we have. But how do we do this? Well, we have to accept what we don't know and decide whether or not to go ahead. As far as that goes, there are no right or wrong answers because unless you have a DeLorean and a flux capacitor, your guess about whether or not your decision will be successful is as good as mine. If you want to become an NFL football player and are scared of having a brain injury or ending up with CTE, then you can look at certain statistics and try to look at what a, a retired NFL players say in interviews. And while this might tell you to one degree or another what happened to other players in the past, it doesn't tell you what's going to happen to you in the future. This is what lies at the core of not knowing whether or not to follow your dream, right? The, the lack of knowledge about what the future brings, right? This is the scary part. You can either, you know, run on faith and pretend to have knowledge about your future success, or you can admit to not knowing and, and choose your dream in spite of that. You know, chase it. And then there is, you know, the case of what I like to call quitting syndrome. People whose passion for their dream has faded, but they continue to follow something they used to care about just to avoid the self-consciousness of labeling themselves a quitter. Well, that's, you know, what, what, what's worse? Ask yourself, forcing yourself to do something that you don't care about and, and something that you don't need or abandoning something that adds no value to your life? I would say that the former is almost its own form of insanity. You can boost your self-esteem again after quitting something, but you can't get back the time you wasted if you don't quit. So now we run into, you know, the question that goes as follows. Does it ever make sense to delay a dream? You know, my answer is a hard subjective yes. Obsession, for example, can be a destructive force for the individual if it is, you know, if it's not ever questioned. If all that matters is the dream, then everything else is secondary. Most of us disagree with the notion that you should carry on by focusing most of your time on your obsession, even if it requires that you ignore the following things, right? Your mother is dying and she wants you to visit her before you de uh, her death. You're, you're an athlete and your doctors have repeatedly warned you that you will die if you continue to train. You've been considering suicide ever since you started your graduate program, but you fear that you're nothing if you don't get your PhD, right? If these, if these situations make it so, so, so that you, you know, ignore them, and, and carry on only with your dream, if that is the sort of mentality you have, that, that can prove to be extremely toxic. So the only way to decide what to do in any of these circumstances is by having priorities, right? They aren't perfect ways of reasoning, and, and they don't tell you what to do in every circumstance, but they do give you some idea of your own hierarchy of what's important to you. Some athletes would gladly die in the pursuit of a certain goal. Now, I may disagree with that, but if their hierarchy has their athletic goal as number one at all times and no matter what, then assuming we both have the same information, there's probably very little I can do to change his mind. My idea of what he should do is every bit as subjective as his. 